Hey guys, this is Akarat Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore video. Today we'll be talking about Star Wars canon and looking at the brutality of the Empire's many prisons. And this is a topic that appears in the Alphabet Squadron series. One of the main characters, Karen Aiden, spent nearly two years in an Imperial prison and it changed his life. It radicalized him against the Empire. He developed addictions and as part of the New Republic, he was obsessed with destroying the Empire empire and protecting the galaxy with a robust new republic intelligence service. Now that's not to say he was a good guy or anything, Karen Aiden had a lot of agendas, many of which were simply self-serving, but his experience in an imperial prison was certainly formative. One of the most terrible things about the fall of the republic was that the empire was able to operate with total impunity. There were no functional checks and balances on the empire, although some republic era institutions remained, like the courts and the senate, they lost all power before being formally dismantled. Palpatine could do whatever he wanted, and we saw that with the destruction of Alderaan. But what's equally as troubling is that there were billions of people within the Empire who also had this kind of power. These were often evil and cruel people, they were bullies. And like in the real world, when you give this kind of person power, they will always abuse it, and innocence will suffer. So what I'm getting at here is that the Empire frequently abused its citizens, sometimes through the order of Palpatine, or if an Imperial official was actually doing the will of the Empire, other times simply because some middle-level Imperial went on a power trip or wanted someone to go away. Other times a person was just unfortunately caught in the crosshairs of some larger plot for completely innocent reasons. And this is one of the most troubling parts of Imperial prisons as we'll discuss today. There was absolutely no recourse if you were locked in an Imperial jail. You had no rights, you couldn't speak to a lawyer, there was no guarantee that you would ever be allowed to leave, and the Empire would face absolutely no retribution for locking an innocent person up, and even if that weren't the case, the Empire often used Used vague notions of terrorism or anti-imperialism to justify indefinite imprisonment. So we learn a little bit specifically about the different types of prisons from Karen Aiden in the first Alphabet Squadron book. The first is labor camps, and this is something that we've known the Empire does for a long time. Wookiees, for example, and other species were forced into slavery and sent to labor camps when making the Death Star and other Imperial weapons. Karen says that labor camps were luxurious in their way, brutal, apt to work inmates to death, but the prisoners were more likely to be killed by one another than by a stormtrooper. So that's a great start. Labor camps weren't for important people, they were for these slaves that we mentioned or just regular criminals who just didn't warrant very much attention. However, he compares them with the quote-unquote mass education centers, which he says were exercises in brutality, where whole villages were packed into conditions rats would balk at and left to fester in their filth. So these would probably be used if the Empire was moving on to a planet and wanted a village out of the way, or maybe just a spot for groups or individuals which had opposed the Empire. He also says that there were mobile prisons like Akresker and biocontainment zones for species the Empire hadn't properly cataloged, and for any non-human who particularly irritated an Imperial officer. And I imagine that these biocontainment zones were among the least humane of Imperial camps, because we know how the Empire saw aliens. They were probably just thrown into a room together and left to die. Karen Aiden was in what was called a transitory facility. They were called as such because a prisoner was typically held at a transitory facility for six months before being moved to another location. So like a processing facility and according to Karen, many people in here were never charged with a crime at all. They were, and I quote, locked away because a stormtrooper or a loyalty officer or a middling bureaucrat found them indistinctly suspicious and wanted someone else to investigate further. However, the lack of guilt notwithstanding, very, very few people were released from transitory facilities, they would typically be moved to another prison. We know that for Karen Aiden's imprisonment, he spends some time in a transitory facility, and he was moved to a room that he could barely sit down in and just left there. There was nothing to do, he was just surrounded by concrete and occasionally fed Leto once a week to be tortured and to get a little bit of exercise. There would have been other prisons as well, these are really just some general categories. For example, high-ranking rebels would have probably been taken somewhere specialized 
in interrogation and torture. We see that a high value prisoner like Princess Leia was held aboard the first Death Star, and the Empire was just really in the business of imprisoning people. They were very cruel, and they were a fascist, dictatorial government. Star Wars has many famous prison planets in both canon and legends, the most notable of which I would say is probably Kessel. Both canon and legends have pretty similar stories for Kessel. The Empire employed slave labor on the planet, or the planetoid, with slaves going deep underground to mine spice. And the mines are just awful, and legends specifically, there are spiders which take people and kill them. You can't have any light because it messes up the spice. And if you just read the Jedi Academy trilogy, you'll see that it's just a not very pleasant place to be. Another famous Star Wars Legends prison was the Lusankia, and this one is very, very disturbing. The Lusankia was a hidden Super Star Destroyer used by Azani Isard. Captured rebels typically would be taken there, they would have their mind broken, and they would be brainwashed. Often prisoners from the Lusankia would return to the New Republic or the Rebellion, and would either execute themselves or kill others in very gruesome ways. As Tycho Selku found out, one of the worst things about the Lusankia is that even if you escaped or were somehow allowed to leave, people would always be suspicious of you and they would think that you were brainwashed and actually an Imperial sleeper agent. Similarly, Star Wars canon has Ashmead's Lock, which is very important in the Aftermath series. Ashmead's Lock also produced sleeper agents, however, it wasn't due to psychological torture or anything like that, rather through a chip placed in the subject's brain. Another notable prison that I remember from Legends was the one on Dathomir. We learn about it in the courtship of Princess Leia. Palpatine was really afraid of Dathomir because of the Night Witches, and in particular Gethzerion, so he blockaded the entire planet. No one could leave, and all flight-capable vessels were removed from the planet. Since the Empire already had lots of resources going into keeping Dathomir secluded, there was also a prison placed on the planet, which housed what Palpatine would have called enemies to the Empire. So you really don't want to end up in Imperial Prison, you probably will not escape, you'll either be killed by the conditions, or a trigger-happy stormtrooper, or perhaps another prisoner. Of course, it wasn't the Empire who maintained prisons in the galaxy, there would have been probably millions or billions of them. We see a very famous one in Han Solo at Star's End, with the Star's End facility. As we see in the Clone Wars, the Republic had prisons. So yeah, maybe you want to think twice about being a smuggler or whatever else in the Star Wars universe, but that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, have a good one and may the force be with you.